Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us again today. We're here with Crystal Reiner. Crystal is a massage therapist in Winchester, Virginia. And uh, Crystal's been doing the program. Crystal, yes. you look like an expensive dessert. Oh, I thank you. You're welcome. Now, I've been working on it. I'll bet you have. So we're going to talk about how you've been working on it today. And uh, okay. as, uh, as I understand it, and I, and I do understand it because I've known Crystal a couple of years, and uh, Crystal has done a remarkable job of uh, transforming herself aesthetically. And uh, you'll, uh, we've talked, we've spoken at length with Leah Lutz, uh, who has accomplished uh, the same kind of a, a complete transformation using strength training as her basic mm -hmm. uh, method of restructuring things. Crystal, grab that picture. The, uh, the, the, yep. the, the before this picture. Yep. Now, hold that up right there. I want you guys to look at this. You can see that this is Crystal. And you see the face. You see it's the same girl. And now, put that down. And now look at this. Crystal is, uh, uh, this is a rather dramatic transformation. And we're going to talk As to her about, about why and how today. So, Crystal, you were uh, obviously a little disappointed with yourself previously. Tell us about that. Um, the disappointment was much more that the fat itself was frustrating. Um, it was extremely frustrating. Like you woke up thinking about how fat you are and every time you go shopping or you get dressed, it's constantly how tight are my clothes? Um, does it make me look fat? Uh, what are people thinking about when I'm going out in public? Um, it's, it's nerve wracking. It's absolutely nerve wracking and it's, there's never a minute that goes by that you aren't thinking about your body weight or not even body weight, but like size, mm -hmm. like the shape and stuff of your body. Yeah. Not so much the, the weight on the scale, but, but yeah. your physical appearance. Yeah. I'm like, right. my numbers didn't matter, but it was, it was what I looked like in my clothing. So how I felt uh, when I moved. How long had you been carrying around what you consider to be uh, excess body fat? You were a kid. I I have been. Were you a, a little chubby? Girl. Little chubby kid, right? <laughs> I was. I was a little on the hefty side. I carried it in my butt, in my ass, and as I got older and post pregnancy, um, I carried it in my belly, which was very extensive. Um, and it didn't matter what I did, that it just stayed there. Right. So well, it was, it, it was because what, there was no reason for it to go anywhere else. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people have this, uh, a lot of people have this same problem. A lot of people don't know how to approach uh, a problem like this. And there will be people yeah. that uh, comment on this video I can see them furiously mm -hmm. typing right now that say they've been doing a strength training program and have uh, not managed to get anything done as, as a result even of employing a strength training program. Why? Right. Uh, why did you decide to do a strength training program and how do you think, and this is a big question, so I want right. you to talk a while about it. Okay. And how did... Uh, how did you implement a strength training program and make it work for you in a, in a, in a body fat loss context? Because most of the time we think about a strength training program, we think about getting right. stronger, but you have, you and Leah both have managed right. to, to uh, develop the discipline from the strength training program and mm -hmm. carrying it and carry it over into your mm -hmm body recomposition. Tell us how that worked. Uh, right. Um, strength training was never something I considered previous to the starting strength. 
I will honestly tell you that I know nothing about weightlifting. People come up and talk to me all the time about it, and they ask me about this person. They ask me about that person. I really don't know. Um, I didn't try it because... Every time I looked into something like weightlifting, it was, you'll turn into She-Hulk. You're a big girl. You'll turn it all into fat or all your fat into muscle, and you will be 215 pounds of tank. And I'm like, that is terrifying. That is terrifying. That's as nice as I can be about it. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't want that. I didn't want that. So I never – I didn't even know where to start to look into it. Um, I – Kind of like I ran into a starting strength coach. I asked about what they did to get the body that they had because right. as a massage therapist, bodies tend to tell tales. So I'm like, Indeed obviously, they, they probably know what they're talking about. So you, um, you, your coach was John Musser. He's one of our good friends yes. out in Virginia. John has been very helpful to uh, to the Starting Strength Coaches Association. In fact, I'll tell yes. you right now that that John was the I was the guy that suggested that we form the Starting Strength Coaches oh. Association several oh, that's years super ago. Cool. Yeah, and uh, John and I are good friends, and he's uh, he's an excellent guy to have mentor you in in this nice. uh, in this endeavor. Well, uh, yeah, and so he uh, he helped you out. What did he do? Mm -hmm. Um. I asked about uh, if he knew a trainer, and I figured that he had a trainer, um, that he had to know a trainer, so I was like, trainer, and he's like, what about the ones at the gym? And I'm like, I've tried them, like, I'm a massage therapist, you can't, you can't tell me that I'm moving my lats when the movement doesn't even engage it, it's a little hard to like, you, yeah. you can't just roll me along like that. You had a little um, bit of insight into the fact that these people had no idea what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> you're going to move your <laughs> ass and you're like, I'm like, that, 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 that's yeah. not a thing. Sorry. Right. Um, so it's like, try the trainers. Um, and he mentioned that he was a coach, a starting strength coach. And, um, I was like, okay, we can, uh, how does that work? Like, where's the program? He told me to get the book and read the book. And that's what I did. Um, he said, do exactly what it says. And that's exactly what I did. So it's, it, it, I mean, the book lays it out pretty good. And well, we'd like you to think so. I, f I, I mean, I mean, it's, I, it's laid out very simply for the average person to be able to read it, understand what it is saying, and apply it. Mm -hmm. So um, as a massage therapist, it was great because it made sense. It's, it's science mechanics. I'm like, it makes sense. Um, so I started in on that, and I noticed within the first two weeks of training that body composition started to change that quickly and yes yes within the first week i noticed things within the second week i noticed more things and i'm like that's new like i'm very mm -hmm. body aware so i'm like that's new um how many dietary month, how many dietary modifications did you make at that same time I made oh well the first I made two weeks. no dietary. Really? I was going to say no diet. No, I made no dietary uh, changes. In fact, I um, I ate like a horse. Uh, I probably put the horse to shame. Um, and you were still seeing it, still seeing body composition improvements. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I asked about dietary change immediately because I was like. From my mentality growing up, I have dieted. I always dieted. I've been dieting since I was 12 because at, at 12 years old and 160 pounds, they told me – excuse me. They told my mom I was fat and that I needed to go on a diet. And so they stuck me on like a 1,000 to 1,200 calorie a day diet 
and didn't mention anything about macros. They were just like, here, good luck. And well, that's just what they know how to do. The poor and things. That's, and it just, was, you know. Yeah. It, they were doing the best they could. Yeah. They didn't know any better. No. And um, so, so my, my mindset going into it was diet. Okay, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to diet. I'm going to lose weight. Got it. Um, I was told not to change my diet. And I looked at him and I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, get strong first. Everything else will work itself out. If you want to change anything in your diet, add more protein to your diet um, because you're going to need it to help you recover. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. Um, so, yeah, dietary change didn't happen for eight months. I was losing an inch off of my belly a month. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. Uh, I think probably that will be that will be a surprise to lots of women that are oh, used no to doubt. that are used to thinking in terms of uh, caloric restriction and mm -hmm. uh, as being the only way to recompose. But you were doing the starting strength program. You squatted. You pressed. Yes. You deadlifted. You bench pressed. Yes. yes. You did power cleans at some point. I'm sure you did. Um. Power cleans came later, but right. yes. Mm -hmm. And what did your numbers do? My suddenly, numbers... you're suddenly you're focused now on how strong you are, not on how fat yes. you are, right? Yes, it it became an, an obtainable goal. I I I knew now I had a plan, and and that was amazing because I'd never had something to where I could go. This is where I'm going to start, and this is where I'm going. Show us the pictures. Okay. The new ones. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, those Absolutely. two right there. We, we'd like to see this. I want everybody to see Crystal's cat <laughs> and her little cat suit, which is quite fetching. And, uh, and now change to the other picture. And this one is also... Very interesting. Here is Crystal in the same little cat suit. And what we see here is not what you would what you would call a fat girl. And uh, Crystal, this is just a this is an amazing transformation. We're all very tickled with well, this. Thank you. And uh, what are you lifting? It surprised now? me too. What are your um, lifts? My lifts, my uh, top squat is 255. My top deadlift is 325. My top overhead press is uh, 105. And my top bench right now is one, uh, 145. Yeah. So I'm like this close. I need a sticker. Right. So. I'm going to get well, me a sticker. Well, we'll get you a sticker at some I know, point. I, it's going to be there, you know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm what's excited. The, what's, Nick, what's the women's sticker? 100, 150? She's going to get her bench one, What is it? Yep. The, the, the sticker is 100, she probably knows better than 155, yep. 200, 250. What is the, no, I can't really? remember. No, it's, uh, it's, it's what's 250, the, what's 300. Crystal? 100. Say again? What's the press number? Is it 100? Press number is uh, yes. 100. The press number is 100. The bench number is 155. One, the squat, I why believe, Why would it be 155 as fond as we are of zeros? I don't know. I think it's 150. No, it's 155. 155. And then the squat is 225, right? 225 yes. and then 300. Yes. All right. Well, you're right there. Yes. All right. It's almost. It's okay. 155. We got to... Odd. Whose fault is that? That doesn't, uh, look, Nikki, that doesn't look symmetrical. Nikki Sims, Leah, and I asked like four. Well, what do them idiots know about anything? <laughs> well, anyway, well, you're right there. You're right there for a sticker. So that'll that'll okay. that'll come along. So I I'm think what that. I think probably the value here, the the takeaway point for uh, most of the people listening to this podcast is the fact mm -hmm. that. When you begin to focus on your performance, when you begin to think about what you're going to do 
under the bar, yes. how strong you're going to be, what your program is going to look like today to get you down the road to a position that is higher in terms of strength than you are right now, then that becomes a process and that the, the transformation in from exercising into training, the, yes. the, the, the granting it the status of a process mm -hmm. uh, carries over into the other aspects of your daily existence. Absolutely. For example, if you are in a, in a situation where you're extremely focused on these numbers, your dietary situation changes to support your training. And, yes. and this makes a tremendous, very, very important transformation mm -hmm. in your approach to diet and your approach mm -hmm. to the rest of your day. Yes. And, uh, I mean, diets never worked for Crystal. No. Diets never worked. No. Diets, uh, at, because a diet only approach leaves out so much mm -hmm. important uh, material that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that strength training puts in. Strength training is a process of of rethinking your approach to your body and uh, mm -hmm. and look it does seem to work for the first time in your life you no longer think of yourself as a fat girl no no i don't how has that changed your approach to the day oh, um i can throw on clothes mm -hmm. and look good in any of them mm -hmm. Um, I can go shopping for the first time in my life and I can walk into the store and I can pick up anything and I don't have to try it on and I can leave with it. I can This buy is a clothes. girl thing, guys. Well, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the other thing... <laughs> it's it's not a girl, just a girl this thing, is stuff it's also, girls do. It's, it's, it's <laughs> we don't know where to go. It's also a fat thing, though, too, because, like, as a girl before, my limits were to what they had in stock for my size. Mm -hmm. I have never been able to go in anywhere and just have a selection and base what I bought off of what I actually liked mm -hmm. versus what they just had. Right. Because they didn't carry my size. Or I was like that weird in-between size that, that before stretched jeans and before, like leggings were a thing and right. like over stretchy stuff. It was like you walked in and here's, here's your selection. You had three pairs of pants you could choose from. You had right. two shirts that you might be able to do. Button up shirts weren't an option because I had a 38 double D breast. Um, you couldn't do most of the clothes. And then when you did put them on, they didn't look right. They pinched like oddly right. in all the wrong areas and well, you at, came at, out. at what body weight was this taking place? We forgot to ask you. What did you weigh at your heaviest? I weighed 250 pounds at my heaviest. And what do you weigh now? My current weight is 150. And so I bounced a, between. You've lost 100 pounds. Yeah, I bounced between 145 and 150 and my lowest weight was 138 pounds and I decided that was too skinny right um because my lift started suffering like I could not move weight and I was not okay with that well so now, now isn't that I, interesting now isn't that interesting let's reflect on that for just a second uh okay the vast majority of women in a weight loss situation I suspect see no bottom to the, to the body weight. Yes. They think uh, a two, most 250 pound women would be perfectly happy weighing 115. Right. But this is another thing that the, uh, that the process of strength training does. It takes the focus away from body weight per se yes. and puts it on performance. And you made the logical yeah. decision that 150 mm -hmm. was a better body weight for your performance than 138. Yes. Do you yes. see the power that this gives uh, a person who is previously trapped in 100% focus on, 
on, on body fat. The idea that maybe I need to gain, you know, eight or 10 yeah. pounds now. That's, a, that's well, an extremely powerful tool. And know? the other so interesting it's a, thing I... It's a good position for you mm -hmm. to be in, isn't it? Yeah. It's great position. And something else I found interesting, which I think you'll find interesting, my sister is 140 pounds. She runs between 135 and 140. My sister is a larger body size than I am at a heavier weight. Right. Yes. So Standard is, muscular body weight composition appearance. Yeah. Yes. It's. I didn't realize that until I got down and I was looking for a number because I kept asking my sister, like in my mind... Like, my mom is this big. My sister is this big. Um, I mean, my mom's only 5'1". It was 96 pounds when she got married. She's only mm -hmm. about a buck 20 now. My sister is my height and has always been between size 0 and size 5. Has kind of fluctuated up since she's had kids. But now, like, her and I were comparing weight. And I actually had somebody take a picture. And I realized that my sister gave me a pair of pants and I tried them on and I was like, these don't fit me. Like they're too big. They are way too big. At a, but, at a heavier body weight than the girl that was wearing. Yeah, like two, like yeah. 15 pounds heavier than my sister. So I'm like. And your pants, her pants were loose on you. It's a, yeah, yeah this is a, um, I think that it's a, an amazing thing to learn Ooh. that strength training can produce more as a mm -hmm. side effect yes. uh, than dietary only programs can produce as their primary mm -hmm. effect. And yes. I think this is a this is terribly important point. So those of you who are watching us here uh, who have been who've been grasping for a way to handle this kind of a problem. You, you really need to, uh, to give this other approach a try because uh, this is a thing that, this is a thing you're not taught. This is, a, yes. this is not in the popular literature. This is, not, mm -mm. this is not the kind of thing you see at Weight Watchers. This is not the kind of thing oh, that no. nutritionists, mm -hmm. most nutritionists will tell you. This is a complete, mm -hmm. completely different novel approach to this problem. And it is a- yes. It's a situation of uh, developing the tools you need to control every aspect of your physical yes. existence. Yes. And as a result of a new emphasis on performance, body composition normalizes. And I think that, yes. uh, that, that Crystal's an excellent example mm -hmm. of this. Thank Crystal, you. thank you for yes, being darling. with us today. Oh, thank you. And uh, appreciate your sharing your story with us. Uh, Absolutely. They'll, uh, there'll be some people want to talk to you about this. So you be ready for them, okay? I'll have my keyboard ready. Excellent. And thank you for joining us on the podcast today. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thanks.